thank you everyone for being here and thank you for um, allowing me to come and um, share some music with you. So uh, the evening I called this um, recital Soiree de Schubert. And a soiree, for those of you who don't know, it's a gathering generally at somebody's home. So I guess we're in a church that could be God's home um, if you're that way inclined. Um, a gathering with music or spoken word. So um, this is obviously music. And I called it on Schubert because I was doing a project um, where I was playing recitals devoted to Schubert's music through the seasons. So this was the one which I had sort of done for summer. Um, and so this particular um, recital has Schubert in the first half, and then the second half there's some Schubert, but there's composers that have been influenced by Schubert. And so um, that's why you see the, the contrast in the, in the second half. The first piece I'm going to play is the sonata in G major. Uh, it's the last sonata that was published in Schubert's lifetime. Schubert wrote 15 sonatas that we know he intended to be written and probably published. But there are a lot of incomplete sonatas that he wrote and never got round to finishing. A little bit like the Unfinished Symphony which Schubert is famous for. Um, so this was the last one that was published. It was published as number four. Only four sonatas were published in Schubert's lifetime. Um, and this particular sonata is, is very, very um, beautiful. It's very sunny in its, um, in its outlook. It's very optimistic. So you'll hear that throughout. There's, there's yes, moments of tragedy, but there's just a lot of beauty to it. Um, some of you may know the pianist Sviatoslav Richter. It was his favorite sonata um, of all the sonatas. You probably also know the composer Robert Schumann. Robert Schumann said of this sonata, it is the best sonata which Schubert wrote. The sonata is in four movements and um, the publisher gave the title Fantasy Sonata to it. That was not Schubert's title. So sometimes you may see that title um, when you see the published music. But it was actually just called Sonata in G Major. Um, what's interesting about it is we have this beautiful, not slow movement, but relatively slow movement to begin the sonata. You feel like it's a beautiful lake or something and the sun is rising. Um, as a descriptive sort of way of thinking about it. You may have other um, ways that you might like to think of it. But there's not any tension in the beginning. Um, the second movement, most composers, if they had written a generally slow first movement, would write a faster second movement. Schubert doesn't do that. He writes again an andante. Um, so it, it's quite an interesting idea. Mozart or Beethoven would have certainly written a scherzo or something fast to contrast, not Schubert. We then have a minuet and a trio. Schubert loved dances, and um, this dance has sort of similarities to a sort of a German waltz. It has less similarities to minuet. But in the trio of the minuet and trio, we start to introduce this rustic feeling, this folk-like feeling. And that folk-like feeling pervades into the last movement, which is very much like something like a, uh, maybe a rural um, dance or gathering of um, peasants enjoying the summer, etc. So um, that's the sonata in G major. It's about 40 minutes. If you were listening to Richter play it, he takes even longer because he decides that he's going to play well, you can't hear him now, unfortunately. He decides that he's really going to follow the, the marking at the beginning, molto moderato, very moderate instead of just moderate. <laughs> oh. One thing I should just tell you about Schubert. Schubert wrote over 500 songs. 
That was what he was known for in his lifetime, songwriting. So I think my personal opinion is you hear the songwriting in the instrumental music. You hear the vocal lines, the long lines, uh, lines which could be sung, right? In, in contrast to what you might hear in Beethoven, which tends to be sort of more instrumental and angular.
So um, the next part of the program is Schubert's influence on other composers. So you can see there's kind of a vast selection here. Um, so the first little group is a group of Momo Musical or musical moments. The form of Momo Musical was Schubert's invention. Um, nobody had written Momo Musical before Schubert. Schubert wrote six of them and they don't have descriptions like a lot of pieces like Grieg wrote lyric pieces and they always said what it was like Norwegian mood. Schubert doesn't say that. He just calls the number one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to play the last, oh, the last one of the first book. The next person is a Momo Musical by, composer by the name of Rosemary Brown. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with Rosemary Brown, but Rosemary Brown was a psychic. And she believed that composers visited her and dictated their music. So this Momo Musical by Rosemary Brown, she actually says it's by Franz Schubert. And um, she had visitations um, from lots of great composers, Beethoven, Mozart, Chopin, Brahms, Rachmaninoff, many, many. Um, she had very little musical training. She uh, didn't go to a conservatory or a university to study. So you can be the better judge of whether this is actually Schubert or Rosemary Brown. Um, the last one I'm going to play is Rachmaninoff, uh, Momo Musical. So he borrowed the form from Schubert, or took the form. Again, he doesn't say what the um, piece is about. He just gives them numbers. Um, they were written when Rachmaninoff was very young, just over 20. So um, already you can see the... Um, the pianistic style of Rachmaninoff, which he was to use in a lot of his later work. So these are three Momo Musical.
So that is a very different piece than the first piece you heard by Schubert. Um, so the next group of pieces are all waltzes. Um, so Schubert invariably didn't perform, well, invariably did concerts at home, Schubertiades, they were known as, and he would often um, perform songs um, with, sometimes he would sing for himself, other times with singers, some of his favorite um, pieces that you probably know, Ave Maria is by Schubert, the Earl Koenig, Stenchen, um, of course the great song cycles, Winterreise and um, Die Schöne Müllerin. So um, that was what Schubert liked to do and invariably these evenings would often end up with dancing. And so um, Schubert would play the piano and everybody would dance and he composed very short, beautiful little pieces of about eight bars or 16 bars in length um, and then he published them. He, he was a working musician so he published them. They're not very difficult, some of them, um, able to be played at home by most amateurs. So um, they're delightful little pieces, the Schubert dances. There are Lendler, there are waltzes, there are all types of dances in there which um, you might like to look at. Anyway, a lot of composers um, after Schubert really loved these dances and decided to make concert transcriptions of them. So uh, the two last pieces um, are concert transcriptions by Liszt. Uh, other composers like Dohnani made some. Uh, the Polish composer Friedman made arrangements on Schubert dances. The first piece I'm going to play is by Ravel. So Ravel wrote this group of piano pieces called uh, Vols Noble and Sentimental. Um, and that title comes directly from Schubert because Schubert wrote a collection of Vols Noble and Vols Sentimental. And so Ravel borrowed that from Schubert. Now, of course, Ravel didn't use Schubert's melodies, um, but he used Schubert's idiom. Um, so you hear a lot of the same types of style and the same rhythms which would be in the Schubert dances. So um, there is a group of, I think there's six of them, I'm just playing number one. The second piece has a very interesting um, heritage. It's called the Kupelwieser Waltz, and the heritage goes like this. Schubert gave this waltz as a present to a couple, the Kuppelwiesers, when they got married. The waltz was handed down orally. Um, it wasn't written down. People played it to each other, and they knew the waltz. It wasn't until 1940 that the German composer Richard Strauss said he'd like to write it down. And so this is, it's a Schubert waltz apparently. <laughs> we have to, we're not quite, I mean, obviously this is what historians say, but there's obviously Straussian influences in it. Uh, the last piece is a, a Soiree de Vienne, and they're by Liszt. And he wrote a group of six of these pieces. And what he did with these pieces is he collected Schubert waltzes, and he wrote introductions to them, he elaborated on them, he uh, would change keys of them, he made them into concert transcriptions. Um, certainly the melodies and the harmony is Schubert, but a lot of the keyboard figurations are list. So um, again, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Ellen, for all your help in putting this together. It's lovely to see you enjoying music, and I hope you continue that tradition.
Thank you, everybody.